Well, here we are again. It's been a couple weeks since my last video. Things got pretty crazy over the Thanksgiving weekend. You know how I said last time the weather looked like a prelude to winter? Well, winter has arrived. And it didn't come in subtly, either. More like an angry cowboy through the saloon doors. Thanksgiving night, the first snowstorm of the year hit. And it brought with it the first multi-day power outage of the winter. And around here it gets cold, so electricity is kind of important, and that brought its own struggles. But now we're back, and I get to test out a sensor that I've been pretty excited about. It's Adafruit's BNO055 Absolute Orientation Sensor. Now, I'm really curious about just how absolute the orientation is of this device. Keeping track of the direction of a robot is actually a bigger problem than it may seem at first. Everyone thinks of a magnetic compass. But magnetic compasses don't work so well indoors. Not in modern houses with lots of steel and electrical wires and stuff running around. My experience with magnometer chips has been very bad. But Adafruit advertised this as being an absolute orientation sensor. It's a 9-axis IMU, meaning it has 9 axes that it measures, 3 linear axes for acceleration, 3 rotational axes on which it senses the rate of rotation in each direction, and 3 more linear axes to measure the magnetic field strength of the Earth. Not only does this output those values, but it also has its own onboard microprocessor that allows it to take all of those and do the calculations for you, giving you just an X, Y, and Z orientation output. Now this is not a sponsored video. I bought this device with my own money, and so the opinions that I share here are my real opinions and not biased. Well, maybe a little biased because I did have to spend my own money, but... I will not shy away from sharing my disappointment if it disappoints. Now Adafruit ships these boards with a set of pins. From my past experience with magnometer chips, I learned to make sure that those pins are not magnetic. I took a magnet to them, and they're either tinned copper or stainless steel. Not sure which, but they're not magnetic. Good on you, Adafruit. You paid attention to that one. But I won't be soldering in these pins. My breadboard has steel in it, and so... I don't want the breadboard to interfere with my readings. I instead soldered on a pigtail of tinned copper wire, and this will allow me to get the sensor further from the breadboard. And today I'm going to be using one of my favorite general purpose Arduinos, the Seed Studio Shao ESP32C3. The name's quite a mouthful, but it's a nice, very small form factor Arduino that you can get for $5 a piece, and they perform pretty well. They also have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built-in, which I find it can be very handy from time to time. And oh. All right, uh, where was I? Right. Now this particular Arduino is based on the ESP32, which there's a warning about on Adafruit's website, but... It's not the exact models they list, so I'm going to try anyway, find out what happens. Here I've gone to learn.adafruit.com, where they have some code examples, as well as all the wiring and tutorial for setting this up. One of my pet peeves is when example files are overly complicated. Adafruit did a pretty good job on this one, but there is a few lines of code that we, I don't think, will need, though they are handy if it doesn't work. With the Arduino IDE open, first I must find the library for this particular chip. I'll go to the library section and search up BNO055. Too many fives. There we go. And I've already installed the Adafruit BNO055 library and its dependencies. But normally you just see an install button right here. With that done, we're good to go. Now, I will move these brackets into their correct location, because I'm one of those guys. Now, it's very tempting to simply copy an entire example and paste it into your own code and run it. I don't like doing that, because I need to know how things actually work. So instead, I read through the example file line by line and pick out the pieces that I need. I usually end up leaving out a lot of error checking stuff and things like that just to get it running. And if it doesn't run the first time, then I need to find out what I did wrong. 
But for me, the process works out really well when I'm learning how to use something out in the wild. I'll start with my included files. Using copy and paste there. Let me make the font a bit bigger so we can all see it. There we go. The first thing that we need to do is declare an object for that sensor. Basically a variable. We will open up our serial port. And now we need to execute the begin command for our sensor object. And it looks like in this example you also set the processor to use the external crystal. Now for the main loop we declare a sensor event variable. And this will be where the sensor data is stored. The next thing we do is from the sensor object we call get event. And we feed that a pointer to our event variable. And then it looks like it's merely a matter of retrieving the information we want. In this case, since this is simply kind of a hello world program, I'm going to print out the heading, which I think is the Z axis orientation. We'll find out. And I'll put in a delay so it'll update the program 10 times per second. Now putting some sort of a delay in your main loop is very critical with the Xiao ESP32 C3. If you don't give it enough spare time, it actually won't answer to the USB port and it's very hard to reprogram again. Let's run it and find out what happens. Fatal error occurred. COM10 does not exist. Oh, COM5. Let's try it again. Well, that seemed to succeed. Let's open up our serial monitor and see what happens. It's giving me a solid 3. Oh, 2.94. So if I turn this board, evidently the Z axis is not our heading. I will change my code from Z axis to... I'll try Y. I know I've got the wrong one right now, and there's three of them, so basically I have a 50-50 chance of choosing the right one if I try again. So I might as well go backward through the alphabet because that makes sense in a really weird sort of way. And evidently that is not it either. Go all the way back to the X axis and recompile again. There we go. That's better. Seems quite stable too. Well, it works. Now we got to find out how absolute this thing is. I quickly discovered that when you first power the device up, it always says it's pointing north, no matter which direction it's pointing. This sort of makes sense. The magnometer chip needs to be calibrated. You do this by simply turning it around in a couple of circles. It'll lock on to which direction it thinks is north. But how about the repeatability? For this I brought out my laser level. I had originally purchased it for doing work around this old farmhouse and it will strike a straight line, allowing me to compare that to what the board says is north. I also put an LED on the board and a little bit of code so that I could hook it up to a power bank and simply carry it around. The LED will turn on whenever it's pointed north. Now this circuit board's idea of north isn't what I would call north around here, but I set up the laser so that it struck a line directly across the board and then moved across the room and tried it again. It seemed very consistent. It locked on to what it thought was north and held on to it. Now even if it's a relative direction of north, but it locks on to that one direction, that will work for me. But then I also found out that if I turn the board off and power it back up again, recalibrate it, it will often choose a different direction for north. It's kind of in the ballpark, but not close enough for mapping. It may adjust over time, but I'm not sure yet. I haven't run it for an extended period of time. So there you have it the BNO055 from Adafruit. I wouldn't call it an absolute orientation sensor. It's probably as close as the technology gets at the moment, given the inconsistency of... Oh, Crusoe, you're interrupting. Yeah. So at this point, my conclusion of Adafruit's absolute orientation sensor would be four out of five stars. It's easy to use, responds quickly, and it's very consistent. It's got a very solid relative orientation. You could almost say north adjacent. So there you have it. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video and haven't fallen asleep like the cat behind me. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give me a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. This is Joe, signing off.